Let's do an example problem of time dilation. So let's say that this uh, space traveler swoops down and passes over this farmer's field in one second. So he goes, wow, one second. Well, the farmer, he also has a clock here, and he will measure the time himself. And he will see a longer time. No, it's been, well, let's calculate how long it's been. So the time dilation is given by this formula here. T prime is equal to T all over the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Now, let's be careful. This is the farmer's perspective. That's the time the farmer sees. So this is, um, well, l let me write this out clearly here. This is the T prime is the time of clock as measured by stationary observer. Now this, uh, let me clean up my T prime, this t time, this is the time of the clock as measured in the spacecraft. So this is the time as measured by moving object. So when we plug in the numbers, well, we have T prime is equal to one second, all divided by the square root of one minus 0.8 times the speed of light, all divided by the speed of light, and all of this is squared. Well, we can see right off the bat that the C's cancel, and I just have a 0.8 squared. Well, 0.8 squared is equal to 0.64. And so just doing a little math here, and then 1 minus 0.64, well, that's equal to 0.36. So what I end up with then is 1 second divided by the square root, oops, of 0.36. Well, that's just equal to 1 second all over 0.36 square root is 0.6. And 1 divided by 0 0.6, well, that's just 1.67 seconds. So while the guy in the spacecraft said, hey, I passed that in one second, the farmer says, nope, it took you 1.67 seconds. And that's time dilation. Clocks on fast-moving objects, or I should just say in general, time as measured by a stationary observer ticks slower on fast-moving objects.